Hey everyone, so we're going to make an automation today on Etsy um, and what this is going to do is this is going to search for some type of product and then it's going to grab all of the links of all the results and then it is going to go through each link and um, and get more data, I guess. So this is good for those flows where like you scrape a list of URLs and then you want to do something on each URL. So I'll start at Etsy.com and that's gonna automatically go there. Then if I click the plus icon and then record and then type, I can type, uh, I'll do holiday, confirm this, and then I'm gonna plus record, click on this search button, confirm this, and then I can play that step. So this is somewhere where we can put a variable, like um, if we have this coming from a webhook, we can do like add category. And what this will do is this will bring in whatever data we have um, and type that. That way, instead of searching holiday every time, we can just send, tell our automation to run with whatever data. Anyways, um, I'll skip past this. I'm going to move on to scraping where we see a couple advancements here. So if I click scrape list, um, you'll see this new button or this checkbox here for the smart detection. What this is helping us do is recognize a lot more of these lists a lot faster. Um, however, it's not perfect on every site, so you might need to toggle this off. But once I select these first two, you'll see that it found 64 rows. Um, in my example, I'm, I want to get all of the links for these as well. So I'll click these three dots and then duplicate columns, click it again, and then scrape links. So now this is getting me the title of the product and the link to the product. Um, and that's all I'll get in this, uh, in this flow. I could get the reviews and the price and things like that, but it's not necessary in this instance or for this automation. Uh, because I want to demonstrate the scraping the links and then doing something. So I'll go ahead and save this automation. And then we are going to go ahead and connect our Google Sheet. Just give me one second. And once we connect this Google Sheet, let me, um, I'll do Etsy data. And then we have product name and URL. And then let's do Etsy export. And let's share this with automations at taskmagic.com. And then we can grab the URL and click send to Google Sheets. And then, oops, I already have one connected here. Uh, this would obviously be cleared for you. So you can paste your sheet and then select your worksheet and you'll see your headers there as well as whatever data is gonna be pasted. So if I click play steps, um, this is going to go to Etsy.com, type holiday, click the search button, and then scrape the titles and the URLs of all of those products. So if I have my Google Sheet here, we should see this populate in just a second here. Uh, we're also going to be able to see in this section here what's happening. So we'll see if it replaced with a variable. We'll see when it scraped, how many results it found, things like that. Um, oh, it closed the Chromium window already. So uh, when the automation finishes, obviously it closes the window. If I go ahead and open my Google Sheet, we'll see that all of those titles and URLs were posted here. I think it was 64. Um, so we have 65, makes sense. Now what we'll do is let's name this Etsy export. And then let's go ahead and make another automation. Um, and this one is gonna be us going to that product, uh, whatever this URL is and let's scrape some more information. Um, so like, let's get like, if it's in demand or not, I guess that'd be a cool thing to get. Um, and that'll probably be it. And then what we're going to do is, is we'll write this in product details. Let's get, I'll probably mess up this order, but let's do name price, uh, popularity. I don't know. You guys can get more if you want to popularity. Wow. That was a brain fart. Okay. So um, here we have the first URL. I'll go ahead and grab one of my examples. Um, you can obviously just paste whatever you have here. I, uh, this one will be good because it has what I'm looking for. Some of these might not have this text, uh, which is, again, we'll get into that later. But when we record, we need to make sure that we're encountering whatever situation we want to encounter. So I'll enter this as my first URL. And then let me close my Chrome browser. We'll see that it took us here in Chromium. Um, and now let's go ahead and scrape a couple things. So we're just going to want to scrape singular things. Uh, first, let's get the product's name, which is somewhere. Here we go. Is this the name? That's a really long name. 
I don't think that can be the name, right? I think it is. Okay, so let's confirm that as our first one, name, and then let's scrape, oops, scrape single, and let's get the price. Uh, let's get if there's a sale too. Um, we could use parse for this, and that might be a little bit more interesting. That might be a good use case. We'll add parse into this automation. Um, price, and then let's grab the popularity. Cool, and this is all we need to do. So I'll go ahead and click, oh, I forgot the parse step, but that's okay, we'll do that afterwards. I'll make that the second part of the video. Um, so a couple of things we need to do to set this up. We have our go to page, and this is gonna to go to this URL. <clears throat> the problem with this is obviously, we do not wanna to go to this URL every single time. So we need to set up a Google Sheet, or some, where did my Google Sheet go? Or something for us to um, cycle through. So I don't know where mine went, but let me pull it back up. What we're gonna do is, is we're gonna take the URL of our spreadsheet, click setup trigger, and then loop, and then my echo is gonna go off. Connecting. All right, that is unplugged now. Um, we want to add Google Sheet data, and we are gonna paste that URL, and then select our sheet. We want the data from the Etsy tab. Uh, that's because that's where all of my data is, right? Now I found the other Google Sheet. I don't know where this window went before. Okay, anyways, and then we see our headers. So we have product name and URL. What we need to do is, we let's say we wanna loop like 10 at a time and then start at row two. What this means is, is that it's gonna start at this row, obviously, because this is the first one, um, and then it's gonna go 10 at a time from here. So it'll do these 10, the next 10, and so on. Um, some people might have like a counter or something at the top here, uh, which is why you can customize the starting row. So I'll click continue. Um, the schedule doesn't run because I'm just gonna run this manually. And the reason our loop is actually gonna stay uh, from steps one to four is we want to repeat all of these steps for each URL. If we were doing something like sending Instagram messages and we had like a type username, type password, then our loop might start afterwards since we don't wanna repeat that login process every time. What loop allows us to do is, let's say that we're running this 10 times and our loop is step three to step four, it's gonna run step one, run step two, run step three, run step four, then it's gonna re go down to step three and repeat these two steps 10 times um, because that's what we're saying here. But we don't want that. Then what we need to do is we do not wanna to go to this URL every single time. Um, this is not gonna get us new data. So we need to click the at URL and add the URL in from our Google Sheet. What this means is every single time it restarts its loop, it's moving on to the next row of data. So the first time it types, it's typing this one, then it's typing this one, then it's typing this one, and so on. So what that's gonna allow us to do is, is it's gonna grab 10 rows of data, it's gonna go through all 10 rows, scrape the name, scrape the price, and um, scrape if it's in demand or not. So it will put those in this Google Sheet that I forgot to set up. So we'll paste the same spreadsheet URL there, and then let's select product details, and this is what will go um, go there. So I think this is it. Um, I went through a lot of this pretty fast because I don't want this to be a 20 minute video. Um, last thing we'll do, let's add like a delay step here. Um, just because we're gonna be looping quite a few times, we don't want to run into an issue where uh, Etsy's rate limiting us and stopping us from viewing more pages. Uh, you might not need to do this, but you can play it safe if you want to. So I'll click play steps. I'm gonna let this only run through the first one and then I'm gonna pause the loom um, and I'll show you guys what we see in the Google Sheet afterwards. So again, a really important thing while your flows are running, if you need help troubleshooting things is clicking view logs. This will help you see what was replaced in your variable and things like that. What was scraped, it found the price, it found all this, um, and all of this is gonna be added. So we can click data out and we'll see this is starting to be added as we go. So I'll be back in probably, I don't know, th two, three minutes, um, and we'll look at the rest of the data. I guess I'll quickly show that it's going to a new tab each time so we can see First time it was uh, listing 1544, now it's listing 110. So we can see that it's getting new data um, each time, which is how that loop is kind of working. And then it's populating these boxes as it goes. All right, 
So that wrapped up. If we see our logs here, um, we can see everything that happened during the automation. Um, if we click view the out tab, then we'll see all of the data here. So we have the titles, um, the price that it has. This is where we can use parse and stuff to clear some of this data. Um, I'll probably make a separate tutorial about parse because this one's already gonna be really long. And then we have how in demand it is. So you can use this to like monitor um, categories, let's say their activity. Um, if Etsy is freely displaying how active products are, that seems like a really cool, uh, cool piece of data to be grabbing, especially if you have something e-commerce related going on. I don't know the current standards for this, um, but it seems like this would've been really cool. So if you guys have any questions, let me know. Oh, I forgot to show the Google sheet. Uh, if we go to the, come on, product details tab, we will see all of that data pasted here. So I know a lot of people um, don't like that you don't have the data uh, in order, like we can't place it next to the URLs. Um, that will be very easily doable as soon as we finish the integration between the um, all the API app actions and the recorded automation. So I promise it's coming. Um, for now, just copy and paste. It's better than copying and pasting hundreds of times. You just got to do it once. So in the comments, let me know what else you guys use this for. I'm curious how else you guys use the scraping URLs and then visiting the URLs. Uh, we use this for follow bots, for scraping LinkedIn details, uh, LinkedIn recommendations, things like that.